Welcome to the Community Care Licensing Division and the role of the LPA training module. This training will give you an introduction of what your role is as an LPA with Community Care Licensing. In the module, you will be asked to participate by answering questions and short writing exercises. By engaging in this webinar, we will be able to track your attentiveness and give you credit for your participation. Community care licensing is a regulatory enforcement program. There are laws and regulations that people must follow in order to perform certain tasks. Licensing staff, and primarily LPAs, have the responsibility for ensuring these requirements are met. In carrying out its regulatory function, community care licensing establishes regulations, assures compliance with regulations, and enforces regulations. Community care licensing is mandated to administer a licensing program which protects the health and safety as well as the legal and human rights of adults and children who require out-of-home care. As you can see, there are many roles, tasks, and skill sets required of an LPA. The Academy's intention is to give you the basic instruction and experiences that you will need to conduct your job. The objectives of this module are to, one, provide the history of community care, because it is important to understand the mission of community care licensing and how it started in the state of California, even before the California Department of Social Services existed. Two, to provide the history of the California Department of Social Services and why was the department created and how did it assume the responsibilities of licensing all community care facilities in this state. Three, to know the department's mission, purpose, and how community care licensing fits into it. Four, know the core values of the department. And five, to understand the importance of your role as a licensing program analyst. The mission of the California Department of Social Services is to serve, aid, and protect needy and vulnerable children and adults in ways that strengthen and preserve families, encourage personal responsibility, and foster independence. Development of Community Care Licensing from 1879 to 1910 in California, private charities and churches first began a framework for providing care to vulnerable populations in the state of California. Then from 1911 to 1954, California government began adopting licensing laws to legally aid and protect these vulnerable populations of California. From 1955 to 1972, California state agencies and state departments began establishing statewide systems of community care licensing throughout the state. In 1973, the California legislature enacted the Community Care Facilities Act to be administered by the then Department of Health. The purpose of the act was to establish a statewide system of community care, separate and apart from health care for persons with mental and developmental disabilities and socially dependent children and adults. In 1978, the legislature established within the Health and Welfare Agency the Departments of Health Services, Mental Health, Developmental Services, Alcohol and Drug Programs, Office of Statewide Health Planning and Development, and this department, the Department of Social Services. Now we come to our first poll question. In what year did the California Legislature establish the California Department of Social Services? Was it A, 1973, B, 1935, C, 1978, or D, 1947? Please consider your answer before proceeding to the next slide. In what year did the California Legislature establish the California Department of Social Services? The answer is C, 1978. What are the core values of CDSS? C, for compassion. D, for diversity. S, for simplification. And S, for service. This is the foundation in how we engage our roles and responsibilities as LPAs. The LPA has contact with licensees, clients, and others. The manner in which the LPA conducts themselves is critical to the public image and success of the program. The attitude and approach that the LPA exercises during this contact must reflect the core values of the department. Let's talk about each of these core values. First, compassion. Treat all people with dignity, fairness, and courtesy. 
When we walk into a facility, we want to be as objective as possible. If the previous licensee was rude, we don't want to take it out on the next licensee. We want to take a walk around the block or do whatever we need to do to decompress before we go to the next facility. When we are the officer of the day, we always want to sound interested. We always want to be professional. Diversity. Solicit and listen to all ideas from people of various backgrounds and philosophies. Include these same people in policy and program considerations. In CCLD, we come into contact with a lot of different people from various backgrounds. We not only come into contact with coworkers, licensees, and clients, but we also come into contact with people through stakeholder groups such as resource and referral agencies, mental health agencies, regional centers, California Youth Connection, and Ombudsman. Simplification. Eliminate unnecessary regulations and paperwork, de-emphasize process, and emphasize goals and outcomes. We as LPAs don't have the authority to eliminate regulations and paperwork. However, we can assist providers in meeting the intent of the regulations if they are having difficulty. We will talk more about this during the waivers and exceptions module. As for paperwork, we always want to be available to provide assistance as necessary if a licensee or applicant is having difficulty completing forms for community care licensing. For example, we want to be careful not to complete an application for an applicant, but it is generally acceptable to provide technical expertise if they have a few questions regarding its completion. Service. Provide effective and responsive service with skill and integrity. How many of us have dealt with a government agency or any organization that you felt was unresponsive? If so, how did it make you feel? We want to treat all people the way we want to be treated. So when we get a phone call or an application, we don't want to drop everything, especially if they are of a high priority, like a temporary suspension order or TSO but we do want to respond and get things processed in a timely manner. The department's expectation is that services be delivered in a courteous, prompt, and professional manner. Examples may include returning phone calls, reviewing applications, and investigating complaints in a timely fashion. Rudeness or intimidation is never justified, regardless of the lack of cooperation from the licensee or facility representative. Unprofessional conduct diminishes or even nullifies the authority needed to administer the program. We come now to our next poll question. What core value do you as an LPA identify with the most? A. Compassion. B. Diversity. C. Simplification or D, service. Please consider your answer before proceeding to the next slide. What core value do you as an LPA identify with the most? A, compassion, B, diversity, C, simplification, or D, service. The answer is all of these can be correct. We have come to a discussion board opportunity for core values. Please pause the presentation and minimize this window. Go back to the role of the LPA folder and click on the SharePoint link that will take you to the role of the LPA discussion board. Based on your response in the previous slide, please provide a short paragraph of the core value that you best identify with and why. As we look at ways to protect the vulnerable populations of our state, let's think about how we accomplished this through our CCLD mission statement. To promote the health, safety, and quality of life of each person in community care through the administration of an effective collaborative regulatory enforcement system. We promote our mission by using work strategies that increase voluntary compliance with the licensees, such as in our consultant role with pre-licensing and plan of correction, or POC, scenarios. This includes strategies such as quality work, quality work as a complaint investigator and in meeting deadlines, etc. Working in collaboration, such as with licensees, clients, their families, advocates, care providers, placement agencies, related programs and regulatory agencies, and others involved in community care.
Get to know what resources are available in your area for your program. Be a resource of information for your licensees. You will be rewarded with successful facilities and good working relationships. Strategies also include staff training in all aspects of the licensing process. This academy, for example, shows the department's commitment to its staff and the department's desire to ensure its mission is successful. Educating the public about community care licensing through websites and promoting continuous improvement and efficiency throughout the community care licensing system. Community care licensing administers its regulatory enforcement from its various programs and branches. Both the programs and branches are headquartered in Sacramento, with the majority program staff located in the many regional offices throughout the state. As an LPA, you are a member of a community care licensing program office. So let's spend a moment talking about both of these important operational arms of community care licensing. Community care licensing programs. In the field, our three major programs operate through their regional offices. These include the Adult and Senior Care Program, which monitors facilities caring for our vulnerable adult populations between the ages of 18 to 59, including the mentally disabled and the mentally ill, as well as our vulnerable elderly populations. These facility types include residential facilities for the elderly, adult residential facilities, social rehabilitation, adult day programs, residential care facilities for the chronically ill, and adult residential facilities for persons with special health needs. Second, we have the Children's Residential Program. It monitors licensed facilities and certified homes caring for children in residential environments. These facility types include foster family agencies, adoption agencies, foster family homes, small family homes, crisis nurseries, transitional housing placement program, and group homes. And then finally, we have the child care program. It monitors licensed facilities caring for infants and children needing daycare. These facility types include child care centers and family child care homes. Although each regional office is under the direction of a specific program, each regional office may house staff from one or even two other programs. Branches. In Sacramento, the headquartered branches include the Technical Assistance and Policy Branch, which consists of the Policy Development Bureau, which writes the regulations, policies, and procedures for residential programs, the Central Training Section, which primarily trains community care licensing staff, and the Administrator Certification Section, which oversees the certification of administrators in residential programs. There is also the Continuing Care Contracts Branch, which evaluates the performance and financial strength of providers authorized to enter into continuing care contracts with persons over 60 years of age, where facilities provide personal care in exchange for the payment of an entrance fee. There is also the Central Operations Branch, which provides administrative support, technology support, financial auditing of facilities, collection of civil penalty assessments through Franchise Tax Board intercepts, and criminal background checks for licensees and employees. It consists of three bureaus, the Caregiver Background Check Bureau, the Division Administrative Support Bureau, and the Information Technology Liaison Bureau. And finally, we have the Investigations Branch, which is comprised of trained peace officer investigators assigned to the most serious complaint allegations. They are located in offices statewide, provide services to all three programs. Separate units assess serious arrests of personnel at facilities. One additional investigation unit works primarily with the department's attorneys on community care licensing legal matters and also provides training. Why are you such an important member of community care licensing? Because from the office to the facility, you represent the department and at the same time carry out the mission of community care licensing in the duties you perform. So let's now talk about the LPA duties that you perform when working with licensees and their staff. The LPA performs a multitude of roles and responsibilities in community care licensing. Most of these can be categorized as one, field work, two, pre-licensing, and three, administrative.
Field work encompasses on-site inspections, collaborating with other agencies and stakeholders on issues of health and safety, and conducting complaint investigations to determine if a regulation or law has been violated. In pre-licensing, the LPA conducts or assists in conducting group orientations, learns to analyze all facets of an application, including an applicant's fiscal, staffing, building, and planned activities for the clients, and reviews, evaluates, and verifies staff qualifications. Finally, under the administrative component, through caseload management, the LPA will multitask between competing assignments, often under tight time frames. If a facility is non-compliant, often we will refer them to our legal division for administrative actions, including putting the facility on probation and even possible facility closures. The policies, regulations, and statutory law that govern our division are constantly changing, requiring the training and retraining of LPAs. LPAs use three components to fulfill their roles in Community Care Licensing's mission statement. They are, one, prevention, two, compliance, and three, enforcement. We will talk about each in more detail. Prevention. Prevention can be defined as a reduction of predictable harm. The LPA reduces harm by screening out unqualified applicants and by providing applicants and licensed providers with information regarding the laws and regulations concerning the operation of facilities. For example, during an orientation, we can let applicants know up front that by state law, if they have certain criminal convictions, they will not become licensed to operate a care facility. Compliance is when facilities are operating in accordance with applicable laws and regulations. How do we get facilities to maintain compliance? Compliance is maintained through facility inspections by LPAs, issuing deficiency notices, and providing consultation. There are a variety of facility inspection types that can be made. They include annual, plan of correction, complaint, and case management. If the facility is out of compliance, the LPA issues a deficiency notice and cites the applicable regulation. The licensee and the LPA can then agree on a plan of correction. LPAs not only consult with the licensee on actual deficiencies, but we also consult on potential deficiencies. If a licensee is unable or unwilling to keep the facility in compliance, then the enforcement function is implemented. Enforcement can entail a number of corrective actions. These actions can range from civil penalties to a non-compliance conference with the regional office manager to facility closure. The severity of the violation dictates which corrective action is utilized. Again, we issue citations for violations of Title 22 regulations. If these violations are not corrected, we issue civil penalties or fines to the facility. However, when a facility is chronically non-compliant with the regulations, the LPA will initiate a written non-compliance plan that identifies the non-compliance issues and or deficiencies that need to be corrected. If after the conference and non-compliance plan, the facility is still non-compliant, then the LPA will initiate administrative or legal action which can lead to facility closure. LPAs are the most important employees in community care licensing because they monitor and ensure that the basic goals and objectives of the division are being met. The LPA confirms that an acceptable level of care and supervision are provided to clients in care. Neglect, if severe, can rise to the level of abuse, so we do not want our clients to be neglected in any way. We will talk more about this in the mandated reporting module. Also. The LPA verifies adequate services such as proper nutritional meals, medications, and activities are provided to each client. Lastly, LPAs provide consultation to licensees on how to operate a quality facility program. We accomplish this by discussing with the licensee current legislation, regulations, and policies that affect licensed facilities, new interpretations of legislation, regulations, and policies, procedures for obtaining information, and additional resources that might enhance the licensee's ability to understand and comply with licensing regulations. 
This includes placement agencies, advocates, day programs, and resource and referral agencies. LPA should view consultation as a common thread running through the three components of prevention, compliance, and enforcement. So to recap, the department and the populations we serve will continue to evolve. Remember our mission statements and core values in all aspects of our jobs. Prevention, compliance, and enforcement are the components used to fulfill the department's mission. And our goal is to assist licensees in maintaining a quality facility program. Finally, I want to once again welcome you to the Community Care Licensing Division and wish you the best as you continue your learning in this field. This concludes our role of the LPA training module that has been brought to you by the Technical Assistance Bureau Central Training Section. If you have any questions, please feel free to contact the Chief of the Technical Assistance Bureau or the Manager of the Central Training Section. For further information on training, please come visit our Central Training Section SharePoint site. Please proceed to the final exercise beginning on the next slide, which will be submitted to the Central Training Section. Thank you and good luck out in the field. Now it's time to apply what you have learned in a five to 10 minute exercise. The question you will be asked is, what do you believe will be your biggest challenge in fulfilling your role as an LPA?